and thank you for joining with us at Gloucester Salvation Army once again. Haven't we been blessed these last few days with the sunshine? It's been so good to enjoy the warmth and the light of the sun. But you know, even when it's cloudy, the sun is still there behind the clouds. We're going to be thinking this morning about the words of Jesus, that he is the light of the world. And, you know, we may not always be aware of that light because sometimes we allow clouds to block it out and we cannot see his face. And our world needs the light of Jesus at the moment. We've just been reminded of the words of the song, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. And we're going to sing together again now. And we're going to sing about the light of the world that stepped down into darkness because we are here to worship him. Let's sing together. Lord Jesus, we thank you because you are the light of the world. You shine down upon each one of us, you guide and direct us. And this morning, Lord, we have met together to worship you, to lay our lives before you and ask that your light may not only be seen in our lives, but that may be reflected into the world around us. For we're aware that there are many areas of darkness still in our world. We only have to look at the news of recent days and to see that there is still hatred and fear and distrust. And Lord, we would ask that your presence will shine into those situations. That people may learn to accept one another. For we are all brothers and sisters in you. We are all your children. Each one of us is important to you. So, Lord, be with us as we share in this time of worship. Be with those who need our prayers in a special way today. 
those who are unwell, those in hospital, those for whom we may be concerned, those who are facing doubts and difficulties on their Christian journey. We particularly ask, Lord, that they may be aware of your light shining upon them today and for the days ahead. We ask all these things in and through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And now we're going to sing together again about that light of Jesus coming into our world. Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice and pain. Come, Lord Jesus. might be afraid of the dark. It's not an uncommon fear and it's definitely not a silly fear. Imagine you're walking in a very dark place. If you start walking without any light, many things could go wrong. You might stub your toe on something or walk into a wall or trip over something and hurt yourself. If you're going to walk in the dark, what's one thing you should definitely take with you? A torch. Just by turning my torch on, I can see so much more around me. I can make sure I don't stub my toe or trip over anything. When we talk about darkness in the Bible, we're really talking about things like sin and being separated from God. Darkness creates a scary environment where it's hard to see and often hides wrong behaviour. So what do we need to get rid of the darkness? Light. Light provides peace and warmth and of course the ability to see. Jesus tells us he is the light of the world. If we know Jesus and trust in him, he shines his light into the darkness around us and keeps us safe from harm.
Bible reading is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 12 to 19. Once again, Jesus addressed the people. I am the light of the world. No follower of mine shall wander in the dark. He shall have the light of life. The Pharisees said to him, you are witness in your own cause. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus replied, my testimony is valid, even though I do bear witness about myself, because I know where I come from and where I am going. You do not know either where I come from or where I am going. You judge by worldly standards. I pass judgment on no man, but if I do judge, my judgment is valid, because it is not I alone who judge, but I and he who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. Here am I, a witness in my own cause, and my other witness is the Father who sent me. They asked, Where is your Father? Jesus replied, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father as well.
I wonder whether this uh, next part of our, our meeting together needs to come with a bit of a warning, you know, like flashing lights and sirens. Please don't try this at home unless you are 125% convinced that you can do this. But after a great deal of risk assessment and research, I changed a light switch this week. I remembered to turn the electricity off at the mains and I followed the instructions and I didn't turn the electricity back on until it was all fixed. I'm here to tell the tale. You see, we had the risk of being in the darkness and we needed light. And so it was that I felt the need. Yep, and I'm telling you now, don't try this at home. And if you have any doubt whatsoever, call in a qualified electrician. Why am I saying this? Because of our reading and our thinking today is that Jesus is the light of the world. The fact that throughout the pages of the Bible we read about light as overcoming darkness. In fact, from the very, very first opening lines of the whole Bible in the book of Genesis, the voice of God rings out across the cosmos and says, let there be light. And there was light. And God looked and saw that the light was good. Throughout, as I say, the Bible, there is this contrast between light and dark. And there is probably no better place to, to see this outlined than in the Gospel according to St John. The good news of Jesus according to St John. And in his Gospel account, right from the very beginning, he talks about Jesus being the light that's come into the world and overcome the darkness. You can read it for yourself. As you go through that, that account, that book in the Bible, you see people's sight being restored, going from darkness into light. You see them understanding in a greater, greater measure who Jesus is and what Jesus is about. And they have these kind of light bulb moments when truth dawns on them and their darkness is turned into light. You see, Jesus not only said, I am the light of the world, but as we heard, he went on to say, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Now, here comes another warning. Just as I am not an expert and trained in matters electrical, Neither am I trained and an expert in matters to do with mental health and well-being. But I do know what it is like to experience depression in my own life. I do know what it is like to have that sense of darkness and hopelessness just enveloping me. And there is absolutely no way out, it would seem. And in those moments, I can testify to having good friends within the Christian faith who have come alongside me. And I've also witnessed the, the skill of the professional counsellor that has led me out of darkness into light. Faith and works going hand in hand, restoring me to the person that God wanted me to be. But this is a long and difficult journey for some. I know that and I am, again, saying to you now, I am not an expert in this, but I do know a little of what it means to sit in the darkness. I'm sure uh, the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, sometimes felt the same. We have in our, in our songbook, our hymnology, his great founder's song. And one of those verses starts with the line, My tempers are fitful. My passions are strong, they bind more my poor heart and they cause me to wrong. And I'm sure he was a man of very shifting moods, sometimes high, sometimes low. And how many of us would be able to identify with that? And another hymn writer, Francis Rowley, also says, Days of darkness still come o'er me, sorrow's path I often tread. But the Saviour still is with me, by his hand 
I'm safely led. How Francis must also have experienced the words of Jesus as he spoke in the Gospel account there. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The writer to the Hebrews quotes from Joshua when he says this in chapter 13, verse 5, the words of God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's as if this is a light bulb moment for so many people. You know, we've all walked through dark days and some are still walking through dark days in this past year and a half. There have been some very, very sad occurrences and people's livelihoods and lives have been lost to the pandemic. And for some, it seems hopeless and dark. I'm not going to say to you today that adopting the Christian faith will suddenly change everything for you. But it will give you someone into whose life you can entrust your life and he will give you a guidance through life. He will be your light in the darkness. Just as you were lost in the midst of the night and someone comes with a torch, doesn't stop the night. It doesn't stop the night, but it brings light to the path. And so our Christian faith, our faith in Jesus, brings light in darkness. If you are having a particularly difficult time just now, we would pray for you and with you that Jesus would be your guide through the darkness, for he will surely bring us back into light and we may know his never-ending presence in our lives. May God bless you. Thank you for joining with us this week again. And allow me, please, to offer this prayer for you, for us all. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you spoke light into a dark and chaotic world. We thank you that you sent Jesus as the light of the world. We thank you because the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light and on them the light has shone. We thank you for those who are struggling in darkness even today, that you reach to them in love, care and compassion. Father God, we thank you for Jesus and his companionship. We thank you that you, through the Holy Spirit, indwell this whole world and bring light and hope where there is none. Through the actions of your servants and your ministers, your disciples, your followers and your friends. Lord, help us to help each other as we seek a way towards the light. In the name of Jesus, we make our prayer. Amen. So we conclude with a bright song and the line that starts, it says, Why should life a weary journey seem? Jesus is my light and song. God bless you. Thank you.